What's up guys? Welcome back. The weather has changed. We're ready to go. As promised, we are going to pull all the body parts and useless crap off of the C5 Corvette to strip it down, get it ready for our exo cage off-road vet cart concept. Stay tuned. This part of the build is one of my favorite parts where I get to just like rip stuff off of the car that we don't need. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Let's get started and get the hood off. Got the hood off of there. It's one of the few pieces on this car that's not damaged. So if you are a C5 Corvette owner and you want this hood, let me start by saying I apologize for making fun of your car in the last episode. And yes, these parts are all for sale. All the parts that were taken off of this car, uh, the car are for sale, uh, but you gotta be local. I'm not shipping anything, but if you're local, I'll give you a good price on them. Just email me. So next thing um, I wanna do is continue in the front end. So I wanna try and get this bumper cover off, which is probably gonna be a bit, little bit difficult because of the amount of uh, different things around the uh, mud flaps and the rock guards and the stuff like that, but I'll get it figured out. Looks like it's gonna be a total pain to access from underneath to get into the fender bolts. And since both the fenders are messed up and the bumpers messed up, I'm just gonna try and take them all off together. So I'm gonna go after both fenders now too. It took a while, but it's starting to look cool. We got the first fender off, and uh, it was kind of interesting because this bracket right here that holds it on was really, really bent out of shape. So I had to pull the headlight out to do the rest of the fender work. And yeah, we got it off of there though. So now I'm gonna move on to the other side, uh, pop up that headlight and do the same type of thing. Probably remove the headlight first and then go after this fender and all that stuff to hopefully finally remove this front bumper. It's a stubborn one. Car's looking better and meaner by the minute. The front bumper was so tough to get off though. It was one of the most bolted on front bumpers I've ever worked with and it was such a pain, but I finally got it off. So next thing I'm gonna do is start to look into these um, fender liners right in here. These are, these are pretty solid uh, fiberglass constructions here. And most of the pictures that I've seen of cars that have um, gone the cart route remove this windshield washer reservoir. Now, I am hesitant to do that because we are trying to do an off-road build and obviously having some of that would be really, really good to keep. So I'm gonna try my best to keep it, uh, but if we can't, I won't be too surprised. Maybe it's something that we have to temporarily remove because it looks like it does look like it bolts into this piece, but then maybe we can build another bracket later on. So I'll be, I'll be as gentle as possible with the removal of this side and that side. We got those uh, fenders or fender liners or whatever you want to call them uh, peeled off. They're just, we'll, we'll clean this up later on. So they were just uh, glued onto the frame, uh, really similar to like how the Lotus Evora's body was attached to uh, their aluminum frame. So it was like glued there, 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 and there. So I just popped that one off. We'll build some brackets for the windshield washer. Um, and then over here, uh, it was pretty obvious that if I, if I rip this one off, then I was gonna lose all the battery box and a lot of the covering of the ECU down here and that other stuff. So I just uh, I just did a nice little trim. That way we could leave our bracketing here. And that should be good for now, but as we start to look at bigger tires and whatnot, we may need to jump into this area a little bit more, but I thought that was good for now. So Eric's here. Eric's got a new dog. This is Cooper. So as Eric is here more at the shop, so will Cooper. Um, 
I'm thinking doors next. God, you can barely see the car because it's in a dark spot. I'm thinking doors uh, should be popped off next probably. Eric and I are pretty keen on getting into that back section because uh, we're coming up with some ideas right now for how we're going to handle the off-road tires. It's looking good, but we really got to double check in the back. But first, first let's get the doors off. The doors are off. That was actually really quick. Um, there's just a two plug system in that goes into the wiring harness and the door. So you just unplug those and pull the doors off. So got both the doors off. If anybody wants to go for a summer drive in your own Corvette, uh, I, it's try it out, try it out at home. Uh, no, but anyways, both those doors are for sale too. If you, uh, if you need a door, those were undamaged, but remember local only. Um, so next, Eric and I are gonna move into this back section. All this stuff is tweaked. You can tell it's all toast. So we're just gonna do our best to uh, to kind of gently disassemble it. Got the trunk lid off and this uh, rear back, the thing that covers the convertible top when it's down. So now Eric's gonna work on the removing the convertible top and I'm gonna work on uh, figuring out how to remove the quarter panel, probably on the other side. knows where it's safe around here just right underneath the camera oh, hey buddy so we got the rear fenders and the back bumper off they were toast anyway so we just kind of ripped them off and um, this is what we're left with all of this stuff is supposed to uh, come off the car as well uh, we're noticing in here lots and lots of damage from the wreck I mean that all just snapped and torqued and and just a bunch of fiberglass damage so this car was rightfully totaled um, here's what the rear impact bar looks like it's definitely seen better times um, it looks like this is a looks like it's one piece onto the frame rail so we're gonna have to uh, do some sort of cut and repair at some point on this um, but we're still focused on removing the mass right here uh, the majority of it so Eric and I are continuing to just kind of hunt around and see what we can figure out and uh, well you guys will see when we see we'll just pull it all off next stage of uninstallation requires the spear of destiny the pry bar of chaos um, it's 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 glued on there this whole thing is a giant fiberglass hot tub and it's glued onto the chassis and it, it ain't gonna come off gracefully so here goes nothing We did it! I'm so proud of us right now. We got it done. Here's the worst news of it all. I'm not gonna try and hide this. There is a kink in our frame rail. It's a bummer. We did some measurements on the tire and the wheel. It's still facing the right way. The suspension is good. So uh, you guys remember how I said like there's there's future generation plans for this car. First one is to compete in, well it's not a competition, but to, to have fun in the Gambler. Eric and I have decided that it's gonna be perfectly fine for doing that. And then for the next iteration of this car, uh, we weren't actually gonna use this frame. We are gonna more use the powertrain of the vehicle. So that doesn't really mess up anything. So it's a bummer, but it's not the end of the world and it's not gonna slow us down. As far as how we're gonna lift it up, we haven't come up with any ingenious solutions. We are thinking about potentially modifying the leaf spring in the bottom to push it up a little bit, looking into what we can do in the front. But the main thing that we're gonna try and do is fit much, much taller tires. So uh, we're gonna get wheels that have a different offset. We're gonna basically get truck wheels that have a different offset that'll send this out. And then if we need to, we'll space it. 
that should get our wheel way out to over here, which gets us a lot more uh, real estate for a massive 33 inch tire. So that's all stuff that we're gonna be working on. We've got plans for a roll cage, but hey, you guys have heard enough about roll cage plans the last week, so we're not gonna bother with that. Um, and uh, we're talking electrical, custom lighting, headlights, taillights, light bars, all the good off-road stuff. I also, I didn't tell you this, Eric, but I had a, a sponsor hit me up that sells like roof rack cases and stuff like that. How cool would it be if we got cargo cases that went across the top roll bars? I like it. That'd be pretty cool. And any other off-road stuff that we can think of. We need fenders because we're obviously gonna be kicking up dirt uh, and brush guards and um, skid plates all soon to come. We've got a game plan for all of it. So on our little Corvette here, the battery used to go right here. And we thought that's a great spot for all that electrical stuff. Sorry, you can't really see it very well. All that electrical stuff to move up and go into here. At least that's the hope. That's the overarching hope. That way we can get it away from this massive wheel that we got to place here and any threat of water and other stuff. So that's what Eric's gonna get started on. And I'm, I'm gonna let him take it from here. So after tearing a few things down, we kind of have a better idea of how we want to relocate things and how we want to route some of these wire harnesses here. So we did have a little charcoal canister or whatever little canister was right here. So we know that we don't need that for um, running the car. So we ditched that and then we unmounted our ECU and our other little control box here, whatever that goes to. And then kind of looking at how we can route those wires up through here where our battery used to be. Um, and then the other thing was, if you look on this side, how it's pretty clear on the outside of this frame rail, we're gonna be running those pretty big tires. We wanna keep, we know we're gonna be safe here because we're gonna be bumping this tire out with a three inch spacer, as well as a pretty low offset tire. So that's gonna bump it out even further. Um, but when we go to steer, we wanna keep this area clear. So <clears throat> driver's side is good over here, but the passenger side, we have to start clearing some of this area out. So we're gonna go ahead and move the coolant overflow. We can make some brackets, stack that over here. Um, and because we're not running a hood, we can also stack things vertically because we don't have a hood to worry about clearance issues. So I'm gonna move the fuse box over this direction as well. Maybe try to fit it right in here um, and then try to get rid of this box here completely if we can. So that's kind of what we're gonna be working on now. Now we're getting somewhere. So as you can see, we've pulled the entire box that was in this area. All that got ripped out. We have routed our ECU harness down here. Um, that just goes right up in here and our ECU should sit right about here. We're gonna try to fit our fuse box in this area right here. And then with the coolant reservoir, um, if I'm seeing correctly, it's just a T right here. So if we get lucky, and I'm going to double check if this is a check valve or not, um, but these are just heater core hoses, so they should be fine. Um, so your heater core goes from here over into that route. So um, my thoughts were if I can take this, just flip it 180, reverse these two hoses, and then our coolant reservoir should be sitting exactly 180 from that over here, taking up this area right here. Um, and then I can just make a couple brackets to bolt that down to again because we don't have a hood to worry about clearance or anything like that so we can just kind of stack it wherever we need to um, and then that way we have all the clearance we need for our big tires over here so as you can see it's kind of looking a lot more like this side over here which is what we wanted in the first place um, so we're gonna work on kind of mounting our fuse box in this area uh, we are possibly going to have to make a heat shield um, just because our exhaust manifolds right here and we're gonna have our fuse box living in this area as well um, we're gonna put it as far back and to the side as we can just to clear the tires but we are kind of limited on how far we can put it because our engine wire harness is right here and that kind of keeps it from moving any further back so we're just gonna work on gonna work on putting 
the stuff in their respective homes now I'm thinking I might try to put the ECU um, up against the firewall back here um, tuck it behind as well as I can um, one thing that I do want to try to do this was the mount for the battery tray um, so it was a fiberglass fiberglass kind of panel that sat on top with four bolts so, and then I pulled that off um, but if I could I'm probably gonna end up cutting this off um, pulling this whole thing out and then I can use that area to make a couple mounts for some of that stuff as well so that's what I'm thinking so we're gonna start working on that all right well I was trying to cut through here um, with the sawzall but Chris was using it as well with his car um, and I managed to toast it pretty good so that was our last one so we have to run to the hardware store real quick and grab more sawzall blades and um, the other thing that we have to do is relocate our battery to the rear of the car we're obviously cutting our battery tray off right here um, so we're gonna have to extend these hot cables that go to our fuse box and then they go into the cabin to power what's in the cabin um, so we need to get some cable that runs from that connector up there through here over here and then i think we're going to end up making a little battery enclosure that sits right here bolts down right there our cage should be going this way so it should be out of the way right there um, so we have to get some wire to connect our leads that go from that battery over to where our fuse box was so i'm gonna run to the store real quick and we'll be right back Alright, so we got our battery tray mount all cut off. We got it pretty flush with the Sawzall. I'm pretty happy with that. We'll just leave that how is it how it is. Um, I don't think we really need to grind it just because we're not really going to be doing in anything in this area. Um, and then after that, we got the coolant reservoir flipped around. Um, the hoses were just barely slightly different sizes. Um, this one is a little bit big for that barb fitting, but we did get it to tighten down with a couple hose clamps. So we'll put it through a few heat cycles, make sure nothing leaks, but it should be fine. Um, just has to last the weekend. And then now we're going to move on to mounting the fuse box. Um, we want this to live somewhere in here. That way it's inside the frame rails um, for when our big tires come in. Those should stick out pretty much kind of right here, um, but we have to watch that swing for when the tires turn. Um, so the fuse box we want to try to make live right about here and then the ECU will route everything. <clears throat> and then I'd like to put that right in this area. And then once all of that's done, we'll kind of hide and tuck all this wiring up, kind of try to loom it and loop it right in here. And then I'm thinking we might try to make a little protection plate that goes from right down there on the, on the frame and comes up and covers all of this area and kind of tucks all that behind it and that way we can just remove that plate if we do need to get in there otherwise it'll kind of just protect everything from dirt and debris and hopefully i don't think we'll be going through any water because it's central oregon so it should be pretty dry but um if it does come down to it it'll kind of be a splash guard at that point so um, we need to get that done and then we got some battery cables um, so we're gonna start running some cable from our connector all the way back here and then we got a little battery tie down so we need to make a little frame or box and then use the tie downs with the battery back here all right so small change of plans as i was kind of playing with some of this wiring in this area kind of got to thinking so there was a big grommet right here that a lot of the power cables came through from the cabin over to the fuse box um, and i was looking on the back side and there wasn't really anything behind there so what i ended up doing was cutting a bigger access hole straight into the cabin on the other side and fishing the leads from the ecu and that might be the trans controller whatever that ends up being um, through here through the hole over here so the ECU is now gonna have a home in here which is gonna work out a little little bit better because we're gonna have a little bit more room in this area for a fuse box to sit um, and that way it stays out of the weather 
and the elements a little bit more. So now we just have to work on getting our fuse box kind of situated. Um, again, we're gonna put it as far back as we can, kind of something like this. I don't know if I'm gonna have it sideways or upright, just because this loom of wires here is kind of what's limiting us from pulling it back a little bit further that way. So we gotta get that in, and then uh, we gotta wire our battery leads from there, again, all the way to the back. So those are our next steps here. service because out Cletus yeah, I don't have very good service right now nowhere in Florida has good service I don't know what's with that I'm in Virginia I'm on a lake <laughs> I see I see so. all right man hey so uh, quick question on your Corvette when you you did your you know you stripped down in your exo cage you still had the kick panels in there on there yes is that for a reason like my rockers? Yeah, yeah. Is that for a reason or is it just for looks or, you know, if we no. take them off, are we in trouble? No. No? They're just, they're just there for looks? Take them off. All right. Yep. Okay. We're going to pull ours off, but All I saw right. that you That's went, you yeah, yeah. I saw that you went through the trouble of like notching out your roll cage and stuff to like fit them, fit them all on there. So I didn't want to. Yeah. No, they're just there. Are you doing a cage on yours? Yep. We're going to do a cage tomorrow. Wow. And 33 inch off road wheels. Alright, well, let me know how it goes. Send me pictures. I will, I will. You want to say anything to the BS for Build crew? Uh, tell them to let her rip Tater Chip. <laughs> Alright, brother. I'll talk to you later. I'll send you some pics. Alright, three dozen zip ties later, and we are actually looking pretty decent. So, I was going to do some fancy little brackets, metal brackets that kind of looped over and, and uh, basketed the, the fuse box, um, but there really just isn't much to hold on to on this fiberglass it's so thin uh self tapping screw wouldn't have held and we didn't have the right rivets so um we went to zip ties so true gambler style here just uh drilled a few holes through the little lip up here on that shelf and zip tied away so that it's that ain't going anywhere if we do have if we do have to end up um changing a fuse yeah we'll just have to cut the zip ties but we will bring plenty of those along with us so um and then all of these wires, um, I kind of coiled up all the excess, loomed all those back up, um, and those are definitely solid. They ain't going anywhere. Um, there isn't any play for anything to get caught on. So um, we are looking pretty good in terms of clearance of our headers. So there isn't going to be any wires getting fried. <clears throat> our grounds are all hooked up back over here. Um, so our chassis ground is going to our fuse box back here, and then we put the battery in the rear. Um, we'll have that hooked up to the chassis as well. So that's how that's going to be run in there. And this is going to be our battery hot lead that we are going to extend over through. We're going to connect this to our extension, shove that through this hole, run it along the kick rail or floorboard there into the trunk area or what would be the trunk. So um, I did get a little extra room by disconnecting the rest of the front harness here. Um, so I disconnected everything that was connected to it, pulled it up out because this whole area is going to be um, modified because we're gonna have to be putting like a skid plate and a front bumper, um, stuff like that on there. So that's all gonna be in the way anyways. So I pulled all that wiring harness out and that let me pull that fuse box back to that firewall a little bit more. So um, I put everything back on here just to make sure I remember what is what and what plugs you where and what I need to keep and what needs to go. So um, another reason for that is we have to wire in all of our headlights and blinkers, um, stuff like that. So that should make it easier to play with all the wiring up top instead of down below. So now um, what's left up front, we still have to make a bracket to hold our coolant reservoir that's going to live somewhere kind of like that. It sips pretty happy right there. Just going to make a couple simple brackets. Um, might have to weld on a stud or a, actually there's a hole right there. Um, so we'll just bolt these, kind of grind the paint off of here. These are more ECU grounds, stuff like that. So those get grounded right there it looks like. 
that'll be nice and happy um, those are headlight wires so I'm really happy with how this turned out um, like I said kind of our goal was to make it look most more similar to this side see how clean that is over here and before this had that giant box right here um, so I'm really happy with how clean we got it looking so and then the inside we just have to connect our ECU and the other little control box whatever that is underneath and then that will get shoved underneath the passenger footwell way up top that way if we do have a passenger he's not kicking it around um, and it stays a little bit more dry if it does rain or something along that sorts so we're gonna plug that stuff back in real quick and then run our extensions over to the back So we got our fuse box mounted and we ran our battery cables through so those get tucked from the fuse box fuse box through our little access hole here and then I ran the cable underneath along here and you can kind of see where it comes out uh, right in here and then right up to where we're gonna mount our battery so I think I'm gonna end up just welding some angle iron together making a little box that the battery will sit in like a little tray and they got a little like tie down kit from the parts store that we'll just use to make sure it doesn't come flying out when we're uh, riding, riding around so um, where's the grounding cable going like right here yeah so we'll just run yeah so part of the chassis so as long as that is actually welded to the the chassis um we should be good worst comes to worst the chassis frame rail there's a bolt right here oh, nice. um or we can just tap in them on the sides or something like that so sure pretty easy when it comes to Western boots, you cannot beat the quality and style of Tecovas. And that's why today's episode is proudly sponsored by Tecovas. These boots are more than a fashion statement. They are built to last. I've worn mine everywhere from the garage to formal nights out, and they've never let me down. One of the things I love most about Tecovas is how comfortable they are right from the start. There's no stiff leather, there's no break-in period, just soft, broken-in comfort from day one. You slip these things on, you're ready to go. And these boots are handcrafted in over 200 steps using only the finest in cowhide and exotic leathers. You can really see and feel the attention to detail in every stitch. They're timeless Western style made with durability in mind, and you can tell that these things are built to last. And if you ever get a chance to visit one of their stores, their experience is unbeatable. You get free drinks, complimentary boot shines and the staff there are super knowledgeable so they can help fit you for a boot it's a whole experience part of what makes the so special plus if you want to make your boots yours they offer free branding and leather stamping it's a great way to add a personal touch to your boots or a boots that you're gifting to a friend or family member and it's not just boots either it's any of their fine leather goods these are more than boots these are a part of everyday life whether i'm working in the shop or i'm out on the town or i'm just kicking back Tacova's boots have me covered trust me you'll want to pair for yourself. So click my link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen right there to grab your new favorite pair of boots today. Trust me, you will not regret it. Huge thanks to Dakovis for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to it. Boys, they're here. Wheel adapters. This is what's gonna make the Corvette magic happen. Big time I get one of these priority mailboxes and it's super, super heavy. I know exactly what's inside it. We got our wheel adapters. So these are the three inch adapters that are gonna make running that off-road wheel possible. They uh, adapt from the five by 120 lug pattern that is the Corvette, I believe, to a five by 127, which is our Mamba off-road wheel. So the rules with this stuff is you're always supposed to test fit your wheel before you get your tires put on. So now that we got our spacers and our adapters, Let's test fit these to our wheels. Well, this is a mighty weird way of test fitting, but I don't have any tools at home. I can't get those lug nuts off. But when we put these on here, lines up perfectly, we got ourselves a wheel with absolutely <laughs> zero, zero backspacing, which is exactly what we wanted to push this wheel out as far as we could. Looking good. So now we gotta go get tires put on these wheels. <sighs> Street tires, I can get wheels and tires, four of them in this car, no problem. Off-road, I think it's gonna take two trips. Trip number one is a success. Just dropped off all the wheels. Looks like they're not busy at all, so that's gonna be really good. We'll get this stuff done quickly. That doesn't really fit, but it's good enough for now. All right, we're all dropped off here at the tire shop. They're, uh, they're gonna get the tires put on the wheels for me. While that's going on, uh, Eric and I ran out of gas for the, uh, for the MIG welder, so I'm gonna run down to the gas shop and uh, refill the gas tank. Lots of errands today. I'm getting a little concerned about the amount of work time we'll have, but we'll get some good stuff done. 
Just made it to the gas shop. So this is our little gas tank for the uh, for the MIG welder, and I'm gonna try and get one that's a little bit bigger, but maybe not too much bigger, because the one we have for the TIG welder is like huge, and that's pretty burdensome to walk around with. We're gonna be doing a lot of welding in, outside and walking around with this thing, so I'm gonna try and see if they have one that's like in the middle size, and just upgrade a little bit. Perfect, we did just a small upgrade, but it's actually a really large upgrade. <laughs> so we went from a 40 to a 60 cubic feet, which means that we essentially doubled well no, we added 50 percent of our capacity and it's nice and we can still like lug it around it's not too hard to move around perfect so back to the wheel shop get our wheels and tires so much tire i really hope this works out <laughs> part of me wants to see eric notching the frame on the corvette later today but part of me just wants to see this work out cleanly i can't wait to get these back to the shop let's head out this is looking insane! Man, I really hope we can make these fit. If we can, this thing is gonna look so, so awesome. This is gonna be like a Hot Wheels car. Um, uh, Eric is here, Cooper's here somewhere behind me, um, and uh, I'm about to hand over the reins to Eric, but before I do that, I just wanna give a huge shout out to Mamba, mambawheels.com. They hooked us up with these wheels for this build. Now they are either owned by Koenig or in partnership with Koenig. I'm not exactly sure the affiliation there, but you guys know we use Koenig wheels here at the shop all the time and this being their partner company they were willing to help us out on this build and it's such such a huge help these wheels look so awesome they're going to help set off the build and they're exactly what we needed we needed something with a with a negative offset to help push the wheel out and everything like that and they just they went above and beyond hooked us up a short term notice and, and got these out here so huge thanks to them and guys i'll put a link in the description if you need some truck suv style wheels uh, for your rig head on over there link in the, is in the description and you'll find what you're looking for Okay, Eric, I'm gonna hand it over to you and you can figure out how to get those to fit on the car. Awesome. <laughs> See ya. Alright, we got that front spacer on and this thing looks absolutely ridiculous. Even from a diesel world, you only usually see about two inch spacers on trucks, so seeing a three inch on a car um, is pretty crazy. If you noticed, I used this, uh, I just used a pipe and wedged it in between these studs while I was torquing them down, that way I didn't have to have, to have the car on the ground or didn't have to use an impact. So that's how I did that. Um, one thing that I'm almost a little concerned about are these ball joints running such a wide spacer. Um, that's gonna be putting a lot of pressure on that outside, um, outside diameter of the wheel. So that's something that might be concerned about, but we will see. So far, it's looking pretty good. You can see how this outside mounting surface compares to the body of the car. So we're looking pretty good. These are already way outside the body, um, but we're gonna get the wheel on here and see what that looks like. So we got the spacer on the rear um, and we went to mount the rear tire and the rocker panel right here was definitely in the way. So that met Mr. Saul's all and came right off. So now we're gonna get to mounting our tire and seeing how it looks. The wheels are on and holy cow, these things look freaking awesome. You have no idea how excited I am right now. These things stick out so far. We're definitely gonna have to do something about mud flaps, maybe fenders. Um, actually in Oregon, you kind of have to have at least mud flaps that come out to the outside of the tire or else you are definitely most likely going to get a ticket. Um, so I might have to have something in the rear, but holy cow, these are freaking awesome. The fronts do like, the fronts look like they have plenty of room for turning. Um, it looks like they'll clear in here just fine. We'll play with that once we get the other side on and we'll jack the front of the car up and test our locks left to right. And then, but for now, we wanna go ahead and get the fastener side jacked up and get those wheels swapped over.
All right, now we have all four wheels and tires mounted. We have all four spacers on, everything is all torqued down. Let me just give you guys a closer look on what our offset's looking like. You can see our brake rotor is almost flush with the outside of the rim. Of course, our tire is gonna poke out a little bit more, um, but holy cow, that is ridiculous. So, I am praying that our ball joints hold, hold together. This thing is freaking awesome. So, we trimmed our other rocker panel. I tried to match it as close as I could to the other. Oh, I still have to cut that off. I cut that off on the on the other side, so I'll get that real quick. Um, actually, something that was kind of weird is on, on the back wheels, on the factory wheels, we're missing a lug nut on both sides. So now, the only one, only extra lug nuts that we had were locking lug nuts. So if somebody really wants these wheels, they have to go through two locking lug nuts and three standard ones. So that might be a pain in the ass if we do have to end up changing the tire. Um, but it is what it is. One thing that I am a little concerned about is this clearance right here. We should be fine just because I don't think we have that much travel on our suspension. Even if we did, it's not that big of a deal if that rubs. I might cut that out anyways, just with Sawzall or a grinder or something, um, just to kind of free up that area. And then same on the other side, it doesn't really have that little indent, but our fuel cap or fuel fill is kind of up here too that should be fine and of course i can just trim that just cut that back if i really wanted to so i am super happy super happy with how this is turning out um super stoked we have really wide wide stance on this thing again our front fronts are pretty much the same offset our actually our brake rotor is further out this way than the inside of the rim so um Pretty crazy, pretty crazy. I'm jumping in here just to say this looks so awesome. This is so good. This this is beyond our like best expectations, right, Eric? Like, and I am so happy with how this is turning out. Like, this is my favorite build ever. Immediately becomes the favorite build ever, and just like that, this is beyond any expectations. I think I think we had. How's the turning, you probably just got done talking about the turning radius and stuff, huh? I'm just about to jack it up. Um, that way we can test our full lock left and right. Um, it looks like it's gonna be plenty of turning radius. We're actually gonna be able to steer. We, <laughs> boys, we built a legit off-road vet cart. We didn't really do much. We just pulled a Corvette apart, ordered spacers and put wheels and tires <laughs> on it. But damn, it looks so good. I'm so happy about this. I can't wait to get that roll cage in. Get, get our other accessories mounted on the front. We're gonna be doing that skid plate up, up there in that front bumper. The exhaust, we got, a, we got a good plan for the exhaust, which you're gonna work on tonight, right? Yeah, I'm gonna to try to get that done today. All right, let's get back to work. I'm just so happy about this. We barely made it with our clearance, our turning radius clearance on this tire and the frame rail. I'm gonna to try to do this with, with one hand. Um, when I jacked the car up, I originally jacked it up in the front and I was testing the turning radius. Um, but when you do it that way, you don't have the weight of the vehicle down. So that changes where the wheel is in pers perspective with the frame. So I jacked it back down or lowered it back down. And you can see I'm cranking on the wheel as hard as I get. And we have just about an inch and that looks like it's at the furthest part of the tire, or the, the outside radius. So we should be good in all of our suspension travel in terms of clearance, which is, which is pretty cool. We do get pretty close to these little guys, but these are just like little drains for the, the tray when the rainwater comes off of the windshield here. Um, and those are all a little like flexible. They, they look a little funny. Yeah, I know. Yeah, don't say anything about those. Chris is gonna need one of these later. <laughs> all right, now that we know that our front wheels and tires clear our frame rails when we turn, and all four of our wheels and tires are mounted and torqued down, we need to get going on this exhaust. This exhaust is totally factory right now. It's got the mufflers. This muffler is pretty bashed up from when the wreck happened, and this is definitely not gambler style. So one, it still has mufflers, those definitely have to go this is ain't gonna be loud enough how it is so what I'm thinking is that on either side there's a flange a bolt together flange one there and one here this one's already cracked over here it looks like somebody had tried to repair it at one point so that already has to be repaired so I'm going to unbolt each side left and right and take those off and what I'm thinking 
is that it kind of does a dive up from that flange straight up here. And what I'm thinking is I want to take that, cut it right about there, extend that straight up and either go out, out with the bend or straight up and possibly kind of have a, a 45 degree bend back. Um, and I really want to put a couple of those little tractor flappers on top. We'll see if we can get some of those in time. It just goes to show if you're gonna do it, do it right. So at some point that this weld had cracked on this, ex this exhaust and whoever had fixed it, some weld shop, some exhaust shop, they didn't feel like taking the, the exhaust pipe off so they welded it in, in the car and there's not enough room to even get a wrench on that bolt because that weld is so big. So now I have to try to, I think I'm gonna run the sawzall blade right along that weld there and at least that'll get the pipe out of the way because um, I'm going to have to clean that off anyways to weld that back to the flange. So cut that there and hopefully that'll give me enough room to get that bolt out. So you can see why this was giving us such a hard time. Somebody had tried to weld this and the bolt that went through right here the head was right up against this weld so i couldn't even get a wrench on it couldn't turn it if i wanted to so i um, ended up cutting it off obviously um so if you do go to weld something get your settings right at least because this looks like uh some of cooper's poop this is the rest of the exhaust that we ended up taking off so over here where i was saying before we've got the flange so we're going to end up cutting right about here at the very last straight section and then extending our pipe straight up and either to the outside of the car or rear facing i haven't quite decided yet and then this is the side that we had to cut the flange off so i'm going to grind that straight or straighter straight enough to weld at least back to that flange and then again cut that straight there and extend it straight up So now that this is tacked up, that's ready to weld, I can bolt both of these, the passenger side and the driver side back up, and then we can start playing with the other pipe. It is super dark outside and this has been a pain in the butt to work on when you can't really see anything, especially when you're trying to weld a bunch of seams together and you can't tell where your start and stops are, but it's done. So if you look down here, our flange is all welded back together and then we have a seam right there and a seam right there and that's our elbow. So we do have some Oh, there's tractor flappers coming in the mail. I'm going to get those ordered tonight. That way we're going to have those flappers on the rear. And that should kind of prevent some moisture and stuff from going down there if it does decide to rain on us. Um, one thing that I did notice while we were down here is that we have to figure out what's going on with these two plugs. I don't know if that's a trans reverse switch or what those are. But that white plug there has the two wires cut to it and that black plug that zip tied right there to that transmission mount or tab whatever you want to call it um, the inside is melted pretty good so we have to figure out what we need to do with those over here kind of same deal we've got a seam down there a seam right there to match the other side and we've got them pitched out out and back so um, we can tell the angle kind of walking around here so I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, it'll be interesting when we start working on a roll cage tomorrow in the next few days, how our crossbars and our support bars play out. Kind of, kind of have to build it around our exhaust at this point. But we wanted to get this done, and hopefully we get that key tomorrow too. I really want to hear what it sounds like. So I think that's going to wrap it up for tonight. Um, 
I'm super excited to get working on it tomorrow. In today's episode, I'm bound and determined to get a new key. I lost it. I should be the one that figures out the replacement. We'll get a new key, start the thing up, see how it sounds with the new exhaust, drive it around with the new tires, start on the roll cage. Sounds like a good laundry list of things to do. Stay tuned. On the hunt for the mysterious key replacement, I've been told by this company that's over here and then over there that they will be able to make me a new key. I don't have a lot of faith because no one's been able to make us a new key, but uh, I'm gonna try. All right, here we go. Big yellow key building. I forgot my paperwork. All right, we have ourselves a key. No idea if it's gonna work. The guys in there acted like it was straight up rocket science to make a new key, but then as soon as they started making it, it was really, really easy. So let's get back to the shop and see if this thing starts the Corvette and then put it on a really big keychain that I won't lose. Well, I was trying this off film and uh, unfortunately we got no, no turn in the key. It just won't, it won't click over either way camera won't focus on it either but you know so um i'm back to the key store i'm going back the steering wheel is not locked which is kind of weird in this car you can totally move the steering wheel either way um but i pushed the clutch in i've tried you know i've made sure it's a neutral i've tried everything i can we got nothing so um unfortunately my pessimism is is worthy i'm gonna head out of the key store see what they say all right we got ourselves a new key cut for free let's head back to the shop and try it out all right, back with the new key. Now the last key had some real significant errors in the cutting, which made it, there's real reasons why it wouldn't work. Now, we don't know. I don't know yet. If this turns though, I feel bad for starting the car without Eric here, but I definitely want to hear how it sounds. Woohoohoohoo! Get ready, boys, here we go. Oh, no, there's not enough power. Okay guys, big update. First thing, it's not the same day anymore. It's the next day. We wasted that entire day fiddling with key stuff and here's what I can tell you. We got a new key made. It goes into the ignition, it turns over, but it does not try and start the car. We're not sending a signal down to the starter to start it. So we believe it has to do with the security. We've went through a lot of different troubleshooting of a lot of different things and it comes down to the resistor inside the key. We believe it has the wrong resistor. So um, Eric is going to attempt to hotwire the resistor. So then it would just basically operate on the key alone, which we know is cut correctly. So that's what Eric's gonna go ahead and do. He's got every possible resistor. I think there's 15 possibilities and he's gonna go ahead and try uh, testing each one of those 15 possibilities. And if one works, then the car will start. That's it. Our whole day is leaning on this. We also have Tate from the Gambler 500 coming out. He's gonna explain kind of what the Gambler is in a couple minutes. So look forward to that. Guys, we got Tate here from the Gambler 500. We're gonna sit down and ask him a couple questions about the Gambler, kind of, I know what it is, but I wanna share with you guys what it is and maybe try and convince a few of you guys to come join us. All right guys, so we're here with Tate of the Gambler 500. Now, a lot of you guys have commented like what the Gambler is about, that you guys are wondering, you know, what are we doing? And now, I'll be honest, I knew kind of what we were doing, but I was more excited about just building crazy cars, knowing that there was a challenge ahead of us, but I don't even know all the details. So we're just gonna sit down, we're gonna have a bit of a talk, and I'm going to edit through it and just edit in all the stuff that I see that's important. So, Gambler, the basics of it, I mean, it all started with the Gambler is a 500 because it used to be kind of a $500, 500 miler. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It started out by a car that's around 500 bucks, but we started with just a bunch of friends, so we didn't really care about rules at all at that point. Uh, and then, yeah, you get about 500 miles out there. The gambler part is, is you know, you're gambling on if your car's gonna make it. Yeah. You're gambling if you took the right road or not. So we're in like a navigation rally. It's definitely not a race. It's not a time distance rally either. You're actually just trying to find waypoints out on the map and doing it like with the most off-road as possible. Right, okay, so about that, you say the most off-road as possible. Now, I saw in some other videos there seemed to be like a level one off-road, a level two off-road, a level three off-road. Is that going to be the same this year? Yeah, so we're kind of changing the format a little bit. Um, uh, last year we had specific waypoints you kind of choose from. Uh, this year we are, are moving the camp down to two nights. So we actually have a loop that you can go do and, and kind of, um, and then you also have an option with the unpaved app to actually come in from wherever you want. As long as you're taking the highest percentage of off-road, then we can then rank everyone to see who took the most off-road possible. 
So that app is called Un Unpaved. You can Unpaved. download for iOS only. That's awesome. So for the BS for Builders out there, where are we meeting? <laughs> So for for you guys, really the inside track. The inside you told me track. that there was like a cool spot that we were. There is a little bit, and actually that's just just for for the BS for builders. You still got time. You can go buy a stock to it. You don't have to. We do will talk about crazy that. Like yeah, this. we will talk about that. But uh, but there's a uh, the old waypoints. There's a common start waypoint. Uh, it's it's down in Twelve, and it's actually the, the corner saloon. <laughs> okay. And so we're people are going to be rolling out of there Friday and Saturday, um, and taking some of the old routes. But we could also do too is meet there and then head straight down to Lebanon. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna have uh, basically a set of waypoints and stuff too. So if you're more comfortable, Friday's like the the, the extra day that we're doing this year, right? Yeah, I wanted to have to have people have the chance to to gamble for three days if they want, or come straight to camp and set up. That's and, what we're doing, three days. All right, three days. Yeah, start start on Friday. Um, if you guys wanted to set something up and you know leave from uh, of the corner saloon, stop by Fekin on the way down to Lebanon, mm -hmm. um, and then at Lebanon they've got a list of like kind of coordinates and a route and stuff that you can take a picture of and get off on your adventure. Hit the schmoll and then we have a bunch of other stuff for you to do down there. So if you're following with us, if you're rolling with us, that's the game plan. And what Tate was talking about earlier is there is definitely still time from the day that this episode airs. I mean, you see us, we, we wasted a lot of money. I mean, we're definitely in the highest percentile of people that are wasting money, except for the guys that are building these crazy uh, military vehicle tank style things. But, uh, you know, a lot of the spirit of this has started as a $500 thing. Every year prior to this, we've always built, uh, we, you know, so this is our first year doing the Gambler, but we've done other $500 car challenges. So my pitch to you guys is if you're watching, you want to come join us, look for a car on Craigslist, maybe look for a car at auction, borrow a friend's car. Maybe you already have a Geo Metro. Maybe you got something broken Mom's down. Mom's minivan. Paint it, duct tape it, theme it, get a costume, have fun with it. I mean, the main role is have fun. Have fun, be safe, carry fire extinguisher, be smart. Um, also, just, just so you know, I mean, as, as I'm sure you understand, Chris knows, is that when you put big tires on a car that wasn't made for big tires, it actually becomes less reliable. So at the end of the day, if you bring a Toyota Corolla out, you, you might you might see him stranded on the side of the road. You, can, you have two back seats there, put him in the back. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's why we did two cars this year. This is supposed to be the recovery car for that one. <laughs> when the Mercedes folds in half, uh, Eric's supposed to pull me out with this car, but we'll see. <laughs> They're both beautiful. <laughs> so that's it, guys. That's the Gambler. It starts July 12th if you're doing the bonus day. No, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Oh, 13th, 14th. Friday the 13th. Hey, we just got an extra day to build, guys. Uh, Friday the 13th sounds like yeah. the perfect day to break down. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, Friday the 13th is the day we're starting, and uh, I'll put up some more information about where exactly we're starting when we get closer to it. But thanks perfect. for coming out, Tate. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah. All right, that's a wrap. All right, so here's the deal. The resistor thing kind of didn't work, kind of did work. Now we try to VAT reset ECU magic 30 minutes of whatever. Eric, start the thing up. See. Here we go. It's going to work. Oh! Ho -ho! Yeah. Yes! We got it to work. Dude, that's, that's a good exhaust. Good. Give a little rip. Yeah, you can see the smoke out the back. Well, that's fantastic news. We literally spent like two days trying to figure that out. What it was is once we unplugged the ECU, it needed to relearn the resistance that the car like kind of always wanted. So there's a 30 minute reset procedure that we had to do with the right amount of resistance in there. So um, we now have a, a working key, working resistance. Everything's working in car starting. That's great. Now Eric's gonna get started on a little bit of roll cage action before we wrap up the day. Yep. You guys are seeing this after the 4th, but today's the 4th, and we gotta go blow some stuff up before too long here, but let's get started on the roll cage. All right, now that we know that the car starts, Eric has broken ground on the roll cage. We're gonna cut out a chuck from right here on both sides. Eric, we're gonna, what, clean it up, and then what, that's where we're gonna weld in the main hoops. So, yep. so it, we're gonna cut, clean, and then we gotta try and build the main hoop. And Eric, I've said this before, but I'll be very impressed if we get that part done today. <laughs> Very impressed. It's not gonna be easy. We got a new tubing bender, pretty hard setup. Let's see if we can get it done.
I'm gonna interrupt Eric's time lapse here to show you guys our new tubing bender. This is something that we got for the shop. This is a really, really, really budget tubing bender setup, and uh, we're gonna try it out. And then I want—it's one of those things that we're gonna try it out with the budget, and then I'll, uh, you know, let you guys know how it performs. This is—we uh, only got one set of dies. They're for uh, one and three quarter inch tubing, which is what we have for the roll cage of the um, the vet cart, and it's also what we're using on the 240Z. So Eric will give it a shot. We'll see how it works and if it performs well let you know if we recommend it or not. Our main hoop is made. That bender worked uh, surprisingly well for what it was. Uh, we were able to get our bends exactly how we needed them. Uh, for our overall height, we ended up going with about 40 inches, which um, per NHRA rules is about three inches higher than the driver's head with a helmet on. So my head sits about here and this bar is going to, we're gonna lean it forward a little bit obviously it's not tacked or welded in yet because that's gonna go right there um, so this is gonna be leaning forward a little bit more Chris is gonna help me hold that up while I weld it in so that's gonna be sitting about three to four inches above my head while I'm sitting in the seat um, and then it's gonna be raked back a little bit and then we're gonna have our halo hoop go around here and then we're gonna have an a pillar bar here a cross bar down here and then a couple supports going from there to there so I'm pretty excited to get this thing in and see how it looks. Our roll cage main hoop is in. And it looks good. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I only set the car on fire a couple times. So you can see it's a little bit wider on top and then it kind of angles down back into the frame rails. This is gonna allow us to kind of have a little bit more mounting options from here down to here and miss our exhaust. As well as we're kind of gonna do an exo style around the front windscreen here. So this way we can do a pipe coming here along the outside right here, and it's not gonna be all angled funny. So that is by design, um, so it is gonna be a little bit wider on top than on the bottom. Again, we ended up doing about 40, 41 inches in height, and then we're at about 55 to 57 inches um, from over here to here. So um, if you wanna build a main hoop, that's about what we did. And then our bender used about a seven, eight inch radius bend. Um, and I think that turned out damn near perfect. So super happy with how it's looking. Now we have to start working on our other supports and our other crossbars. All right, so pretty simple. We're gonna start by doing our main hoop and we're just gonna go from right before that bend up over our windscreen right here, kind of right down the middle of this arc over here and then back over. So we're gonna get started on that. Take two was a success. So yeah, the last one was a little bit too wide and I thought it might work, but after kind of talking with Chris, decided just to do it right and do it how we had originally planned. So now the halo hoop is the same width as the windshield uh, and it looks way better. So happy you did that. Just took a little extra time, did another one. Um, I realized what I did wrong the first time. I just didn't account for the extra bend radius on the other end. I had counted for one, but you know, there's two bends. So that was my bad. Um, so bent another one and this one looks way better so we're just going to trim the sexless off coat both ends and then we should be able to tack it in place So we have our ends trimmed and coped. Those turned out really nice. As you can see, that's gonna be a really easy weld on there all the way around. These are fancy little 
coping jig that uses a whole saw to get the right diameter for that. Uh, we have it in place where we need to be. I went off of our center bends, um, measured outwards, make sure that those are even on both sides. And we've got a nice even gap along our windscreen there, our windshield. So we are ready to weld it up. All right, we're moving the car into the shade. It's getting really hot today, so it's gonna be a little bit different location than normal. Eric just finished up welding up the main halo bar right around here. Looks fantastic. So now we're moving on to the uh, A-pillar bars that are gonna run down around here and down into here. I'm gonna start working on the thing that we're gonna weld the A-pillar bar into that's gonna weld into the frame right down here, and Eric's gonna start working on making that bar. We have our A-pillar bars made, so that end is going to be up there. That's going to come down right there. It's just sitting on the ground right now. Uh, we're waiting on Chris to finish our mounts that are going to be sitting right there with some gussets. That way we know where to cut this end down here, where that bend's going to be located, and where we're going to end up over here. So in the meantime, I'm going to start working on these bars on the back. And what I was kind of thinking, let's see if we can kind of mock up just a little bit. I wanted to do something where it connects probably right here where our other hoop attaches and comes down over here but over here I would like it to kind of sit up right about there and then right where that ends I'll have a bend going down so it ends up 90 into here so if that makes sense we're going to start working on that. update the rear back bars are in they look fantastic Eric coped them cut them welded them up placed them back here they're perfectly level that way when we yop this back section off we can build ourselves a nice little bumper and everything will look clean and straight going up looks fantastic moving on to the a pillars All right, we just wrapped up with one of the A pillars. So you can see it just, uh, it's got a real nice, real close to the uh, windshield frame um, placement. And it comes down here right where we want it. And then that'll tie into our uh, door bar as well. One of the last things that we're gonna do is we're gonna gust it up against the body right here. So we're gonna weld in another strip. So I'm gonna cut and prepare those while Eric is on the other side uh, working on the other A pillar. Got the second A pillar in, it looks fantastic. And Eric moved right along to the uh, back support bar. So right here in the back, sorry, it's really hard to see. Let me rotate around a little bit here. So right here in the back, Eric uh, is cutting up this thing. So that's like the support that Chevy put in the Corvette before for your seat belts and everything else like that. So we figure it's a structural point. And then that's coming back here to the main hoop of our roll cage to give us some, you know, just, you know, triangulation is the game plan. While Eric's doing that, I've uh, outlined where our gussets are going here, and um, we're gonna go ahead and put some gusseting plates in like that down here that will help uh, keep this thing from ever wanting to be able to pull away from this. Also, pulling away from the car up and down like that.
Now that we got our crossbar in and the uh, side gussets in, we got a lot more rigidity on the car overall. It's looking really good. Next thing we're gonna move over to the exhaust. This is something Eric's been wanting to do for a real long time. We got the tractor flaps in the mail. Well, they, they finally got delivered. We had them mailed in and they go on here and Eric's gonna go ahead and install them and then we'll go ahead and start the car, move it back into its uh, normal, normal sitting spot. All right, we have installed the flappies. Eric, well, do your worst. <laughs> uh. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move the car back to its normal position. All right, next up we're doing the door bars. Eric has uh, started measuring. We're just gonna do a singular door bar across here, kind of starting a little bit lower in the front and going up a little bit higher in the back. So same, the same thing we've been doing, basically capturing angles, cutting, coping, and welding them in. Eric just wrapped up on the door bar, so we got our two door bars installed. Now we're gonna move on to the front and uh, we're gonna try and go from this bar right here and this section right here, kind of come out sideways following this around here and then we're gonna catch the frame rail line. So we're gonna make a bend right there, bend this way and then it's gonna bend, bend down. This is the first bar with two different directions of bends. We'll get it figured out. All right, after a good solid hour of cutting and trimming and bending, we've got our matching front bars that are coming down here. Now this isn't all that we're doing on the front end, but this is a really, really good start. So we got them all lined up. They're like dead on matching, which is super cool. So Eric's gonna go ahead and fully weld them in. It's a one day roll cage to XO, XO cage. I think, it's, I think that's officially an XO cage. Looks so ridiculously good. So in the back, we are going to lop that off in a nice straight way, build a new back bumper tomorrow. Dude, this all looks so good. The front, I just love the way the front looks. Yeah, I'd feel, I'd feel completely fine rolling over in that thing. It's so good, it's so awesome. Uh, moving on, we're coming over here. Eric is working on the battery quick disconnect. Because the car has no doors, the battery will continue to drain because it thinks the doors are open once we're in park. So we are wiring in a battery disconnect. We're gonna do a piece of sheet metal that goes between the roll cage and the frame of the car. Uh, and then he's gonna attach that thing in there and then you just pop that out and uh, that's how you disconnect the battery or reconnect the battery. While he's working there on that, I'm gonna come back in here, work on welding in a piece of angle iron right here and some stuff back here so we can do a battery tie down make sure our battery stays still All right, so this is our battery disconnect. You can see the two hot leads come up to here and here, and then you turn this, I don't know, which, oh, you turn it this way, take it out, and the battery is disconnected. 
put it in, turn it that way, the battery is reconnected. And then coming up here, we decided to weld this post to the back of the car uh, for the battery tie down because when we ran it to the back there, it pressed on the battery and I didn't like the way that that uh, was kind of squeezing the battery. I didn't want to potentially have it puncture the battery casing. And then over here we did some angle iron going to this. So the battery's in there and we got a disconnect. We're good to go. That's the, uh, you know, the basics of the electrical and the battery situation and the relocation finished. Next up, some safety stuff and some silly stuff. I found a wing in my basement. This came to me with the, oh wow, when I bought the S2000 and uh, I attempted to sell it a few times. It's a really nice uh, pure carbon fiber wing, but I was never, never able to sell it. So now it's uh, it's going on the back of Dr. Jenkins here. It's gonna get mounted back here. So Eric's, uh, Eric's in the process of welding up another uh, rear bar. It's gonna come off of here at 45 and then back in at 45 like that. And uh, we're gonna mount some taillights from that as well as mount our wing. While he's working on that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this crooked piece of smashed crap that is the rear bumper and start working on building a new one. All right, we got the back bumper cut off. All that crap is cut off. I think for that, to rebuild the bumper, we're gonna do a piece of the uh, two inch by three inch steel that we use for the 240Z frame rail going across within a two inch bar on the top and the bottom of that. So I'm gonna be working on that. Meanwhile, Eric uh, finished welding, uh, cutting coping and welded up this uh, piece right here across, which looks really, really nice. And uh, from there, we're gonna go ahead and have a couple tabs of that super beefy uh, steel coming off of here. And then they're gonna have a support bar going down and that's to, uh, bolt up the spoiler too. Now the spoiler is just for funsies and we may take it on and off and stuff like that. We're off, we're definitely gonna mount some taillight stuff up here, but uh, we're doing these massive tabs and we want it to be able to hold weight because in the future we may wanna do a roof, um, like a cargo container, like on the roof from that bar back to the spoiler. So that's why we're gonna build it so it can take a lot, a lot of weight. Should be able to like stand on this thing when we're done. We got a new rear bumper and a giant ass wing. So the wing is very, very sturdily mounted and um, we got it up there and if we decide we want to take it off, we can always use this as more of a cargo uh, rack type of situation. But for now, Eric and I both like it. And that is strong enough that you could stand on it and it would be fine. Down here, we went ahead and just built a quick like bumper out of these three pieces. We didn't weld each piece to each piece because we actually don't want it to be too strong. Too strong and the car won't absorb any impact. It's already technically too strong, but whatever. Beggars can't be choosers. We wanted to put a big log back there and like strap it on, but we just, we couldn't find a log. We tried to cut down a tree, couldn't find the right tree. So that's what we have for now. It's working great or it will work great. I don't know. Moving on, uh, I'm going to start wiring in the tail lights. So we need, uh, in the rear, we need the brake lights, we need the driving lights, and we need the um, blinking lights. And then, so we're going to get that out of this wiring mess here. I'm going to be working on that and then coming over here Eric is going to be working on a bracket to hold the um, reservoir for the coolant, the coolant reservoir um, and that's probably going to mount up to this bar right here somewhere around there. We installed our rear tail light system. So this is a giant LED strip there and then we have two on the bottom because we had a little trouble with running lights and braking lights. So here, go ahead and turn on the running lights. And that's those two right there. So they let people know we're there in the dark and then tap the brakes. That's the big brake. And then left blinker, that's our left blinker. And then the right blinker, that's the right blinker. So we're all good. We're all set and all street legal and stuff like that. We're gonna move on to the front now and uh, figure out some headlights and blinkers. 
All right, moving on to headlights. Uh, Rough Country a long time ago sent us out for the FJ some of these uh, Chrome Series 2 inch square LED uh, lights. And I had them sitting around the shop and I thought they would look really, really good on this project. And then uh, Eric and I were looking at where to mount them and we noticed that there was already some nice holes with some threaded nut certs in them. That was where the uh, bumper used to bolt in. So we're thinking we could probably bolt the lights into there and that's where we're gonna go ahead and bolt them all in and see how it looks. Oh, by the way though, thanks to Rough Country for sending these out. I'll put a link in the description if anybody's looking for a nice pair of LED lights. We'll show you what they look like right now. We've got our headlights mounted. They're nice and directional, so they're not gonna blind everybody outside of the path, but once you get in the path, they're really nice and bright. Oh, dude, we forgot about the LED light bar. We need to do that later on. That's a day after tomorrow thing. Anyways, so we got our headlights on here, uh, and they're wired into the headlight switch, and everything's good, except for when you turn them off, there's like a faint little flickering. There must be like a phantom source of power, and it's enough to kind of pulsate the LEDs, so we're definitely gonna have to use that kill switch when we're done with the car, which we were we were already planning on doing that. Next, we're moving on to uh, wiring in the blinkers, and the blinkers are gonna go right about here. We're gonna make a cut right here, bend this in, make it a little tab, and then we have some blinkers that will sit right here. We just wrapped up on the blinkers. So we threw on some blinkers right here, and this is what I was talking about, cut it out, and then bent it in, and then they, they fit in there really nicely. I, I like that location. They don't look beautiful, but they looked way worse in other spots. Eric threw on the license plates as well. Uh, I didn't show you guys this earlier, but this is our fluid reservoir uh, mount right here. Uh, we did not find a good spot for the windshield washer sprayer. We, all, we have the whole setup, um, and we may build a secondary reservoir at another time, but that reservoir that we had just really wasn't wasn't looking good. So um, we didn't get all the way through the list uh, today. We were gonna, um, we, we gave this car two full days. We're gonna give the Mercedes two full days next and then we'll loop back around and do some finishing touches on this car. Uh, so we'll finish off the list then. The light bar is one thing that I mentioned that we definitely wanna do. And there's some other stuff. And leave comments below of what you guys would like to see. But for now, I think it's time we take it on its first test drive. Well, we've got a good amount of looks so far. Where are we going, Red Robin? Red Robin. Red Robin place that doesn't serve steak. This is so scary! <laughs> It's an amazing machine here. We should do this professionally. I like it. Corvette Dune Buggies coming to a town near you. Be as for build spec. <coughs> I think we get more looks in this car than any other car. Pretty positive of that. We're gonna need a whole camera for the gambler just pointing out at other people. Dude, this thing is so crazy. <laughs> Made it to Red Robin in style. <laughs> America! Alright, park anywhere you want. I have a small problem with being in Oregon and rain, but we'll live. 
So Eric has actually spent quite a bit of time preparing this car for paint already um, and we're just trying to paint the roll cage. So we're actually painting the roll cage a Mercedes Obsidian Black which is the same color as the black on the Mercedes. Since they're both kind of made and created at the same time I thought it'd be cool for them to have a matching element. So Eric has uh, scratched up all of the steel right here with some steel wool. He has rubbed it down with acetone which is essentially a wax and grease remover and then we are going to do some kind of on the fly masking and we're going to be painting this uh, with a single stick stage paint well, again that obsidian black and um, we're going to be using a detail gun this time instead of the big you know the big old big boy guns we're not going to be using a gun this big it's going to be much smaller you'll see it in my hand and uh, we're going to just be coming through and basically using this piece of cardboard and a couple sets of hands and we'll go like that and set it around and then paint 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 and then flip it over and do the other side and stuff like that i think we're about ready we'll give you guys an update once we get about halfway done done on the first coat it's coming out really really good it looks nice we've had you know a couple of little slip-ups and then we've just kind of repainted over them but you know we're obviously not going for like a mirror finish on this but overall very very happy with the way that it's turning out it looks really good the color is really good it definitely complements the car and uh, yeah it's turned out really stellar so we're we're on our way to the back now um, I gave it a little sack tap on accident over there so we're gonna have to clean that up go through here get this whole back area cleaned up and then paint up the back and the back bumper and then it's on for the second coat The roll cage paint job is complete. It came out really, really good. We're really happy about it. We'll show you more when it when it's dry and we get it outside. It's dried up for about 35, 40 minutes right now, so it's dust free and everything. But uh, let's give it some more time. Uh, Eric and I, for the rest of the night, are going to be working together. Uh, wait in separate um, and Eric right now is installing the Rough Country light bar that we took off the FJ Cruiser. Uh, he's going to be installing that on the top here. Uh, here's the cage um, with the new paint outside. It looks almost too good. <laughs> it looks like we tried really hard. <laughs> Ain't bad, man. We did good. Um, so I think I'm going to end up putting one. Are you going to do one on the front and I'm one on the? one on the front and I'm going to put that one up top. Okay. Six well, more. Dude, go big or go home, right? So Eric's going to go ahead and do one on the front and uh, and one on the top right there. Might as well. Hell yeah, man. All right, things are gonna get a little strange since it's pitch black outside. I completely forgot I need to paint part of the Mercedes, the part that I primered over black. I want that to be that color. So Eric and I are gonna play a little bit of car magical chairs, I don't know, shuffle car. Um, he's got some weld spots that he would like painted up. So we're gonna mix up the single stage and the gun, spray that, and then we're gonna move the Mercedes in here and spray that. All right, we got the vet car painted and Eric is doing the wiring out there. Damn, the switches are installed very nicely. Eric did that really nice and clean in Eric's style. Now let's go ahead and look at some of the lighting. So, top one, yep, that works. And then the bottom one, that works too. It looks really cool, hang on, put them both on again. It looks really cool with them stacked like that. Could you imagine like, <laughs> that look mean coming at you. Damn, that's really, really cool. Great job, Eric. I am happy for you to have that many lumens on the gambler. All right, and with that, Eric is out of here. He starts the gambler at 5 a.m. tomorrow, which is uh, six hours from now. Let it rip.
Imagine waking up in a tent with a thousand cars around you that all want to go racing. <laughs> Welcome to the Gambler. to actually get started. So we're out here in Shamol, Oregon in the uh, pumice pit and uh, it's this crazy mine. There's over a thousand cars, thousands of people out here and everybody is taking off this morning from this point and uh, several different routes, several different places that people are going to go but we're going to take the most popular one. It's 10 different checkpoints and we're going to try and stay off-road as much as possible in these two cars. We'll bring you guys along. Should be fun. We took one wrong turn on the way to the gas station and we are toasted. Alright, we're all fueled up and we're ready to hit the first checkpoint. So with the Gambler, there's a bunch of different options, but basically everybody's just kind of passing around GPS coordinates. So. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna plug them into the maps and just try and make it and stay off road as much as possible. Well, we've had the first fatality for our group and we made it from there to here, and the tranny exploded. So that's one car down. Both BS for Bill cars are still in the race. Let's get to that first checkpoint. Okay, you guys need to be careful because right over here it says animal and bottle collection. I don't know what that's about, but I don't think it sounds good for you guys. Lunch was great. Now we've we've kind of invented our own checkpoint three for today. Uh, we've, we've grabbed two more gambler cars to roll with us, and uh, we're gonna head out there now. If we make it and it is what we think it is, we got something really cool that we're gonna be able to do out there. There we go. Oh, let me wait until the dust settles, and I'll explain what we're doing here. So this checkpoint that we were talking about earlier, we found it. It was actually really hard to find. It's a triangle in the middle of nowhere of pumice and dirt roads. So you're gonna see like three different corners, one tight one over there, a long, long, long straight that you're gonna have to like do a little wibble wobble. And then over there, back again and back around. Eric and I are gonna do our best to try and drift in the Corvette. The, the Mercedes just flat, flat out does not have enough angle to even give it an attempt. But Eric's doing really well in the Corvette. So I'll try my best to film each corner and then I'm gonna give it a whirl with myself behind the wheel. This corner, this last corner seems to be really hard because you gotta you gotta go out on the straight and then come back and then whip around. I'm gonna get geared up and I'm gonna give it a spin. I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever even driven this car before after we added the tires on. This should be a lot of fun.
So we just wrapped up with our special fun stage. Now we're gonna aim for a checkpoint four and we might go off a little bit. We're trying to find a jump for the Corvette, so that could be really cool. If not, I think there's one closer back to camp. But let's see if we can get to a couple more checkpoints before it starts to, uh, starts to get late. I wish I could fully explain how dusty this situation is, but it's on another level. It's on the best level. Still very fun. Pit stop number checkpoint five, six, we're not really sure. We're having a good time. Now, uh, we just ran into some other gamblers right here. He let us know that there's other side of the road right here, and it goes all the way back to camp. It's like a 15 mile road following the railroad tracks. And we're gonna try and, uh, we're gonna try and gamble all the way down it. But we're waiting on Eric. He should have been right behind us, so we might have to go find him. We found an Eric. So Eric's having a problem if he's not able to drive at speed because without fenders or anything, it's throwing so much dust into the cabin that he actually just can't see anymore where he's driving. So we're not really sure what we're gonna do about this yet, but we're gonna find a way. We might we might head closer to camp or try and find a road that's a little bit less silty. Yeah, the silty stuff, like gravel roads are fine, but the silt, it just covers everything. It's like it's I can tough. Tell if you guys are stopped, I would have. I could follow you. Yeah, it's yeah, dangerous. You're going. But yeah. Safe. All right, we got Eric taking the lead right now. He's gonna go ahead of us and uh, kind of run as navigator, and then we're gonna follow behind him for a while. We'll see where we go. But it's a good place to be lost at. We're having fun. Checkpoint seven, lost. Checkpoint eight, probably the city. Well, this place is a photo op if I've ever seen one. So we're out here looking for trouble and I think we found it. It's mini trouble. Eric's got the vet car back here. What he's gonna do is he's gonna take off from right in here, go as fast as he can to this little tabletop that's right out here. Now it's only like a one and a half foot jump. It's about six feet wide, but it's honestly the only jump we could find. But it's just gonna look so damn cool. Like what is this place? Got the cars hidden. We're actually not supposed to be here either, which makes it even better. Dude, look at, Dude, it's a pretty chill spot. Yeah. All right, Eric, this is your Ken Block moment. That did not sound good. What'd we break? Our uh, gas cylinder. That's it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, oh sweet Jesus. Look at that. What? Look how bad that is. Just bent out? <laughs> Something. Nah, it's always been like that, man. Not that bad. Oh, wow, yeah, look where the wheel hit the body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if the wheel spaces and the hubs and the ball joints are okay. Those are all right. Well, we could, we could fix this. That's just zip ties. How did it hit so hard it broke the wing off? Oh, man. We're gonna have to find that little guy. All right, I don't know how the Mercedes fancy traction control system is gonna react to me trying to do a burnout, but I think this is the perfect spot. I'm gonna give it a shot. Turns out van wagons are better at doing burnouts than any BS for build car. BS for not burnouts, we all know this, yeah, whatever. One more fail, but it looked good. Back to camp. 
They both made it back to camp. Eric says it's crab walking a little bit. It's kind of driving like diagonal, so. We're gonna have some work to do tonight on the vet. Let's see if we can get it adjusted back up. Fixed it. Eric went for it, used the toe adjustment on both sides, and it straightened it out really nice. It looks good and straight. Looks actually, we should have done that a long time ago. We got a little bit of extra camber from the accident, it looks like, but not too much. And he also went after the front alignment as well. We won't know how that does till tomorrow. We're not gonna know how any of this does till tomorrow. But it looks good, all just using those toe adjustment arms. So I'm, I'm, I am, I am uh, optimistic, I should say, about that. And now it is definitely sun's fall on a Saturday night at the Gambler, which means it's time for that Saturday night Gambler party. Fast forward about a day later and we are back home. Both the Gambler cars made it home without incident, which is really great. The Corvette is running better than ever, so that is awesome. Uh, huge thanks to everybody that came by like our camp spot and said hi and checked out the cars and, and came by and met us. That was absolutely my part, my favorite part of the whole event and it really made a lot of that hard work worth it. So huge thanks to everybody that said hi and all that great stuff. If you enjoyed these builds, if you enjoyed the Gambler stuff, if you enjoyed any of this, please remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button too. All right guys, I'll see you soon. Peace! Come on.